Great Falls, Montana Tourism, and today we've got Tom Kaczynski in the Basecamp office. Tom, how's it going? Fine. Thanks for joining me today. Tom is a retired journalist, an educator, a writer, and philosopher, and I've known him as the Tom Kaczynski, a local legend of hiking, backpacking, cross country skiing. You name it, he does it. Uh, he is the author of Discovering the Rocky Mountain Front. Uh, he has a very well published blog, um, and he's written as a contributor for uh, as a contributor for our Basecamp blog, uh, hosted at www.basicgreatfallsmontana.org. Um, so today we're talking a little bit about the blog that you recently wrote for us about the island ranges of Montana. Tom, what is an island range? Well, these are these isolated uh, mountains that you see east of, mainly east and south of Great Falls although there's a couple north of Great Falls as well. And they're basically uplifts from the plains uh, from volcanic activity um, and uh, or just geologic forcing. And uh, they, they've come up and uh, they're like these islands on the prairie uh, starting north uh, from the Sweetgrass Hills and probably all the way down to the uh, Crazy Mountains on the south. And in Great Falls, we've got fantastic access to well, I would say that the uh, Little Belts and the High Woods are probably the best access of all. Yeah. Uh, the Little Belts, of course, being our, our marquee island range with yeah. uh, you know, about the size of Glacier Park at a million acres. We like to call Great Falls the base camp for adventure, and that's really what I want to talk about today. You know, we um, had a couple questions about, okay, we know about the Little Belts, we know a little bit about the High Woods, but can we go into depth? A little bit more. So I brought along our handy dandy Montana map here, and I'd love if you could just provide some expert level content, looking north, down, south, um, looking at what there is to do, some suggestions for hikes, trips um, in Montana's outer ranges. So starting to the north, right on the Canadian border and overlooking the Milk River, are the Sweetgrass Hills. I'll start there, Great. but I'm going to just catalog them as we go. Awesome. Uh, directly south, of course, would be uh, the Highwood Mountains, the Little Belt Mountains, the Big Belt Mountains, the Castle Mountains, the uh, Crazy Mountains, the Snowy Mountains, and I don't want to leave out the uh, Bear Paw Mountains. And um, in terms of uh, access, uh, the Sweetgrass Hills are those three uh, mountains that sort of float on the on the prairie as you're going between Conrad and Shelby up on the north and east. You just east. kind of see them dancing Shimmering, right yeah, shimmering. absolutely. Yeah, and um, there's three basic uh, mountains there that they call buttes, uh, West Butte, Gold Butte, and East Butte. And the access is probably the best for public on the West Butte. The uh, Gold Butte, you will have to ask permission. Uh, it's located near uh, an old town and the gold mine, and uh, the East Butte, uh, you will have to ask for permission on that as well. Uh, but um, in terms of getting up there, you basically drive up to um, the uh, uh, town of uh, Sunburst, and there's a really good access road that will, will take you into that area. Um, going into the, the high woods, which are probably um, our little treasure here, yeah. it's a small range, um, if you're coming down the airport, that's the one you see kind of right out in the distance, right? Right. right. Yeah. And uh, incidentally, uh, West Butte looks an awful lot like it up on the Canadian border yeah. in Sweetgrass Hill. Okay. But uh, in, in terms of high woods, there's plenty to do. Yeah. Uh, and I'd say the main access there would be straight from Great Falls on the Highwood Road. Mm -hmm. and, and, and instead of taking the turn 20 miles to Highwood, where the road comes to a T, you go straight out on the dirt road uh, to uh, the trailhead. And your trailhead would be, uh, most trailheads are located between Thane Creek and um, North Fork of Highwood Creek. And great parking areas, a campground at Thane Creek. And uh, there are beaver ponds there. The moose are starting to return because of the beaver ponds. Very cool. There's a small elk herd there. And uh, probably uh, the very best hike there is a hike called the Windy Point Hike Very cool. uh, in the spring. I'm a little bit more familiar with the next one on the list, 
and and you've said it best before, it is the science of Glacier National Park. It is a lifetime of adventures and exploration, and that would be our marquee range, the Little Belts, which really aren't that little. Well, they're not that little. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Little Belt Big Baldy yeah. is over 9,000 feet, and there are high mountain alpine lakes below it, and a gorgeous rid line, rid, uh, ridge line that you can walk and uh, basically see the uh, north to south, the entire state, and all the way to the continental divide to the wow. west. And um, I would uh, I would start exploring that by taking our scenic byway highway that goes from the Armington Junction, uh, just the other side of Belt, down to uh, White Sulphur Springs. Yeah. And um, you, the first thing you would want to do is see the Sluice Boxes State Park, yep. which is um, uh, founded on an old railroad bed uh, that, that, that snakes through these limestone canyons above an emerald green um, belt creek, which is, you know, has some pretty good fishing. Yeah. It's there's a must do. Yeah, an eight mile trail. There's an old uh, mining camp back there worth seeing. And then uh, stop at the uh, Belt Creek Ranger Station for information, but there's a trail right there for the Pioneer Ridge, uh, which is a good up and back, about 45 minutes from Great Falls, and it's something that uh, the Pioneer Ridge, uh, you can actually, if you've got a lot of a lot of uh, stamina, you can actually hike it to the top of Big Baldy. Wow. It's a 10 mile walk one way. So, and Big Baldy would be the tallest mountain in the range. Yeah, it is, and it and it sits over. It's nine thousand one hundred and seventy-five feet. Wow! So it's nearly the size, it's only two hundred feet shorter than the highest point in the Bob Marshall. No way! Which is uh, a Rocky Mountain peak. So anyway, uh, then I would certainly um, go up to Kings Hill, and there's some some trails up there that are worth hiking and a campground, uh, and then down to White Sulphur for a soak at the uh, the spa, which is like the one of the best weekends. Absolutely. That little itinerary you just talked to couldn't really can't be beat. And if you wanted to continue going down, uh, the Castle Mountains are they're not a whole lot to look at, and uh, they're worth going into. There's a campground there, but um, if you're looking for for some real adventure, continue south a little further to um, the Crazy Mountains, which are a very high volcanic range. Wow. And uh, the mountains there go over 11,000 feet. So coming back. Um, as if you were going to Lewistown uh, in the Judith country would be, well, let me first say that in the Little Belts I neglected to talk about the other access points. And the other big access point would be the south fork of the Judith that you would pick up in the town of Utica. Yeah. And um, it goes through most of the uh, uh, eastern part of the range and very scenic and would take you to uh, the middle fork of the Judith uh, wilderness study area, uh, which again has these lovely, lovely canyons and uh, worth worth seeing. Wow. So um, going uh, east, uh, you've got the um, big snowies, and uh, it is another wilderness candidate. And uh, there's a campground there uh, called the Crystal Lake Campground. Beautiful spot with a, a ranger cabin there, and uh, there are several fantastic hikes that are just absolute must-dos. And the one I would recommend um, is the uh, hike to the Ice Caves, which takes you up to the top of the flat, very flat mountain range that goes nearly 20 miles across. And um, uh, the, there's a couple of big, big ice caves that are worth crawling down into. Yeah, and by ice cave, we're not talking, it's called ice cave. It is a cave. Filled with ice. Yeah. Even on the hottest day of Yeah, oh yeah. It, it, there, there are snow fields that you actually get into and walk down to. Wow. So um, it, 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 it's really great. But you can make a, a loop hike after you finish it by continuing west on that trail uh, down to a, a spot called the Grand View, which is a, it truly is a Grand View above the uh, Crystal Lake. You can see uh, as far uh, south as the Beartooth Mountains and uh, in the southern end of the state. As far north as the uh, uh, the Bear Paws, which are very close to the Canadian border. I mean, that's this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, and of course you can see the Rocky Mountain front. Wow. Yeah. On a clear day. So on the flip side of the the little belts are the 
big uh, belts. The big belts. Okay. And uh, it's an area that that it, it, you might not think of as a big belt, big, but they've got a couple of very significant spots yeah. there. One would be the uh, Gates of the Mountains Wilderness Area. Yep. You've got the boat ride there. Many people have taken that boat yeah. ride that, yeah. that goes up the Missouri River where the gates have opened for Lewis and Clark. And um, uh, well worth doing. Uh, driving in there, you can you go to a place called Refrigerator Canyon where there's a great hike. In fact, there's a if you do the logistics, you can actually hike across the gates of the mountains in a day from Refrigerator Canyon uh, to uh, the other side where you pick up the boat and take it back out. Wow. Um, Holter Lake, we were there just yesterday on a beautiful April 24th spring day. Uh, saw 11 different kinds of wildflowers. We saw four bighorn sheep, a rattlesnake, uh, and great views of the sleeping giant. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's, and then I'm not even mentioning the southern part of the yeah. big belts, which include includes places like, um, oh, the, the York Canyon yeah. out of the town of York. Beautiful uh, limestone spires above you, uh, great walking trail out of the Vigilante Campground, and then uh, further down towards uh, Townsend, you'll find the uh, Duck Creek Pass and uh, uh, Baldy and Edith Peaks and the High Mountain Lakes of that area. So um, you've brought with you a resource, a map. Is it, what's the significance of this map? Well, um, if you want to learn. Uh, the best island ranges in, in our area, which are the uh, Little Belts and the High Woods. Mm -hmm. This is the this is the map that you want. It okay. shows you the travel restrictions. It shows you where the trails are, and gives you many suggestions about the uh, sites that are there, like Memorial Falls, for yeah, instance, absolutely, uh, uh, which is very near Nyhart, yep. and um, you know, where the Sluice Boxes State Park access is. Yeah, absolutely. And that can be picked up here in town. Yes, it can. Along with the um, BLM maps yeah. that will show you how to use the uh, sweet grass hills. You're also the author of, well, in my opinion, one of the more prolific blogs about how you can get in and out of wilderness areas of Montana. Would you plug that, that blog for us? Well, it's called um, Out There with Tom, or you could just Google my name, yep. uh, Tom Kapinski, and, yep. and you'll you'll find it there. And I've been doing this for the last uh, 15 years. Wow. I figure I've got some 700 hikes in there yeah. that include m much of this area that I just described uh, in the island ranges. And uh, it's a searchable uh, blog. So, for instance, if you're thinking about climbing Big Baldy in the um, Little Belts, there's this little search box just type in Big Baldy. Baldy. Every time I've climbed it in the last yeah. 15 years, you'll wow. you'll see how I did it and with maps and pictures. An incredible resource. Um, I've used the blog, I've used your book, uh, Discovering the Rocky Mountain Front. Um, that's still available. You can take oh, that yeah. up in town. Either at the, the Great Falls Tribune or through Riverbend Press, in, which is the publisher in Helena. Fantastic. Um, Tom, thank you so much for digging in a little bit deeper into the island ranges of Montana. Um, we appreciate your expertise. Um, you guys, as you're continuing to explore or looking at coming to Great Falls, um, consider the island ranges a lifetime of, of adventure um, right outside of Great Falls, Montana. Montana's base camp for art and adventure. Tom, thanks for your time today. Certainly appreciate it and happy adventuring.